Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner continuing my lecture series on the theory of Python. And in this video, we're going to cover the Python float and imaginary literals and how we can do floating point and complex math. And also a little bit of number theory that comes from math. So if you need a review on what different numbers are and what they do, then this is the video for you. Uh, previously, you should have understood how to do Python in interactive mode. Interactive mode is important because it allows you to experiment and learn. And by practicing and doing these, um, the things that you learn in these videos, you'll be able to memorize them. And you should have been able to do decimal, binary, octal, hexadecimal, including regular integer math operations, including the uh, binary bitwise operations too. So this video, let's start with what, what the number system is. So numbers, we're going to talk about math now. And every good math course should start here. So first of all, we have the integers. And this is the positive numbers, like one, two, three, and so forth. And then you have zero as part of the integers, and then you have the negatives. That's minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on. And for, for remember in, in Python, we're gonna represent negative integers with two's complement. And we're just going to use binary to represent integers. It's pretty straightforward. Use as many bits as we need to represent the number. Don't let the number get too big, otherwise we'll have some problems because we don't have that much memory on the computer. Okay. Then uh, we also have what are called rational numbers. And this doesn't mean rational as in it makes sense. This is rational as in a ratio of two numbers. So this would be like uh, a number A over B where A and B are integers. And this includes numbers like three quarters. It also includes like 3.141, okay? Because this is three and 141 thousandths, okay? And it also includes numbers that might have repeating um, decimal price. So 3.3, .3, this is actually three and a third. So 3.3 .3 repeating. Those are not enough to represent all the numbers we might encounter, like the square root of two and pi. And so the irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be represented by a ratio of integers. And so we can't put them in decimal form. We can't use repeating. We can't use fractions. And so we have to use symbols to represent them like this. And then if we take the real numbers, this is basically all the rationals plus the, the irrationals. I should mention that the rationals also includes the reals, the integers, I mean, because that, those are numbers a over one. So like four is just four over one. So all of the integers are part of the rationals as well. So reals is all the rationals plus the irrationals. And there are other number systems that are very interesting, complex numbers. This involves the square root of negative one, and sometimes people label that R2, or whatever they want to do with that. Then there's quaternarians, quaternions, octonians. I don't know if there's anything beyond octonians. Anyway, you math guys can tell me. Quaternions are actually very useful for computer graphics, but Python doesn't do anything with them. You can create your own quaternion. Many graphic systems do have quaternions inside of them. And octonions are useful only when you're doing like very advanced mathematics, and particle physics, and stuff like that. Okay? So that is all of the numbers that we can do. Now, there's a problem because from here on down, irrationals and reals, and by extension, the complex quaternions and octonions, these cannot be represented in binary. They cannot be represented in the memory of the computer. You cannot store pi as anything but a symbol. And although Python, there are some Python packages that do allow you to do symbolic math. So you can say like pi plus pi, and I'll say, oh, that's two pi. Um, that's probably more the realm of what we're gonna call Wolfram alpha.com. This is the guy that made uh, Mathematica. So if you're interested in dealing with actual real numbers or doing symbolic math, you go use these tools. And there are some libraries that do the similar things in Python, but we're not gonna talk about them, okay? All right, so let's talk about floats. So floats are actually a part of rational numbers, but it doesn't include all the rational numbers. So floats can represent some rational numbers, which is good, it's good enough right? It, we're going to talk about precision and stuff like that. Uh, floats are specified by the standard that's called IEEE 754. And I believe this was written back in the 80s. It's pretty much universally adopted everywhere you see a float. It's using the standard. And the way this works is you reserve the first bit for the sign. Okay, a zero is a positive and a one is a negative. And then you reserve a certain number of bits for the exponent part. Okay, 
And for single precision, which is for 32-bit machines, this is going to be 8 bits, or it'll be 11 bits for 64-bit precision, which is double precision. And then finally, you have the fractional part, which is all the rest of the bits. So for 32 bits, that's going to be, um, where's the number that I have over here? 23 more bits. And for 64 bits, that's going to be 52 more bits. So 52 plus 11 plus 1 should give you 64. 23 plus 8 plus 1 should give you 32. Okay. Now what do these mean? Think back to scientific notation. So if we have like 5.32 times 10 to the 8th. Okay. So this exponent part is going to be that there, but this is going to be in a binary form. And the fractional part is going to cover all of this. However, in binary, the only numbers you can have for the fractional part is going to be like 1.10110. And it's always going to have a leading one there. Because if it's a zero, we're just going to bump it over to the left. So we'll have a one. So we don't have to record the one. So we can only record these bits in the fractional part. And that will give us our float. Okay. So to construct a... Uh, floating point number from its representation in binary, we're going to write one point, and then we're going to take the fractional bits, and then we're going to take that raised to the power of, so times 10, or times 2 to the power of the exponent. Okay, and then we're also going to have the sign there, and that should give us all of the floating point numbers. Now, IE754 also specifies some other numbers. There's NAN, which can be plus or minus. It also distinguishes between plus and minus zero. Um, and I believe there's some other special numbers that rarely arise. They only arise when you're doing something wrong with the floating point numbers. Okay. Now, an important thing to note is that floating point numbers are very imprecise. Um, you have to remember that, so if you're using a 32-bit uh, single, uh, floating point number, then you're going to get six good uh, decimal digits. If you're doing 64-bit, then that's going to give you about 16 good decimal digits. Okay. Uh, whole numbers tend to work really well until you start surpassing these limits. So if you go past like, uh, you know, 99,999, then you're going to add one to that. You see, it might not actually increase. It might stay at 100,000 or whatever number. It's going to stop. It's going to stop incrementing when you keep adding one. The more the exponent, the larger the exponent, obviously, the less precision you have because you're dealing with larger numbers. But that's about all the notes that we have. Okay, so how does Python, how do you write these down in the, as a Python literal? The answer is there's two ways. Really, there's three, but there's basically two. One is you use a decimal. So you can say 1.9. You go 0.19. You can put a zero in there front if you want. So 0 0.19 is okay. Can't do that with decimals because it gets confused with octal, but it's fine with floating points. Or you can just have the point at the end, which is typical if you have a whole number, but you want it to be a float. This works. Uh, you can use your underscores too. So you can say 19.000.754 or whatever you want to do. Okay. And that underscore is treated like a comma. Okay. As you would in typical notation. All right. Uh, the other way is we use an E or capital E. And what the E means is that means times 10 to the power of. So I'll just write it that way, okay? So if I have 1.9 E6, that's going to give you, let's see, let's write 1900, and we have six digits. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's gonna be 1.9 million, okay? And we can use negative numbers. If you hear fireworks in the background, that's because it is July 5th, and apparently my neighbors decided they wanted to launch more fireworks. Yay, America. All right, so uh, this would be like 0 0.000019. Let's see if I got that right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's correct, okay? And you could put a plus there if you wanted to, okay? Obviously, these numbers have to be decimals. They can't be floats. So you can't do like 1.9e to the 6.1. That's not going to work. Okay, now I write it out this way, but technically in Python, you're going to write 1.9e minus 6. That's what it's going to look like in the Python console. All right. Now, if you were to put a J or a capital J at the end, that'll give you an imaginary literal. So don't do that if you want a floating point literal. Okay. Well, let's talk really quick about the floating point math. So let's talk about float math. This is basically everything you need to know about doing floating point math. Okay, so you can't do the bitwise operations. 
with floats. Okay, so if you like 6.1 shift right by one, or if you like 10 shift right by 1.2, that's not gonna work. It's gonna say type error. The type error means that you're using the wrong type. Okay, and in our next lecture, which is about variables, we're gonna talk more about what type means. Okay, you can do the floor division. So an example I have here is 3.4 floor division 1.2 that's going to give you 2.0, okay? Because the closest you can get to 3.4 is 2 times 1.2. If you do 3 times 1.2, that's 3.6, and that's too big, okay? And you can also do the remainder, so 3.4 modulo 1.2, that's going to give you the remainder, which, what would that be? That would be 1.0, okay? And then you can do regular division, so if you do like five divided by four, what's that gonna give you? Well, that's gonna give you 1.25. But we can also do like 5.4 divided by 1.3, and that's gonna give you some number that I don't wanna calculate right now. Okay, try that out, see what it gives you. All right, there are a couple more functions that are very useful. One is called float. And what this does is if you pass in any number, it's gonna convert that to a float. So for instance, if you do float of five, that is going to give you 5.0, okay? And there's also int, which converts whatever's inside to an integer and it rounds towards zero, I believe. So int of 5.6 will give you an integer five, okay? And I'm gonna make a new piece of paper here, chop down another tree, just so I can tell you about this amazing function called round. You can use this in several different ways. The easiest way is you round some number or an expression, and that will always give you some integer rounded up or down. If you were to use a second argument, so like, let's say some number and you do comma zero, that will give you a float rounded down to zero decimal digits, okay? And you can specify positive numbers for the decimal digits. So you can say, I want, I want to get three digits of precision. So that will give you three digits of precision. What do I mean by that? Well, why don't you give it a try? Try this out in the Python console. Round 3.75, that's a silly five, six, one, two, four, comma three. And see what that gives you, okay? And you can also use negative numbers. Let's say minus three, okay? And that will give you three um, what was this? This would be down, like to three. It would basically ten to the three. So if you were to take, let's say this large number six one two seven five one four, comma minus three, see what that gives you in the Python console. Try that out. Figure out what that does. Very important and easy stuff to do. Round is very useful. I use it quite often. Uh, most commonly, I use it when I'm trying to do some kind of math to calculate how many items to show per page and which page we're on, stuff like that. Float, int, round. Uh, let's talk about complex numbers. So, really quick lecture on complex numbers. I mentioned earlier that they arise when you have the square root of negative 1. So, in math, we say i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Uh, in engineering, they typically use j. In Python, we're going to use this. We're going to use J. And we can write imaginary literals. So I can do a decimal plus a lowercase or an uppercase J, or I can do a float, any kind of float with a decimal or an E, and we put a J or a J at the end. And both of these will give imaginary literals. If you're not familiar with complex numbers and such, don't worry about it too much. It's, it's not something that most people need to know about unless they do more advanced math or physics. All right, so um, if you want a complex number, then you'll take some kind of number plus the imaginary. For instance, you can do three plus two J, or you can do 4.5 plus 2.1 J, and both of these will give you a complex number. When you have a complex number, oh, you can create complex numbers also this way. You can use a complex function, and then you're gonna pass in the real and the imaginary uh, components. The imaginary number is not imaginary, it can be real, okay? So you can do like complex, let's write this out, 
3 comma 5, and that'll give you 3 plus 5i, okay? And if you have a complex number, so let's say we have 2 plus 3j, and we do dot, and we type real, that will give us the real component, which is 2. If we take the same number, dot mag, that will give us 3, the imaginary uh, component. And also, we can do this, 2 plus 3j dot conjugate. And we do parentheses like that, and that should give you 2 minus 3j. Okay. If you're familiar with complex numbers and complex math, this all should make sense to you. If you're not, it's probably all very mysterious. So if you are interested in complex numbers, I am doing a series on basic mathematics, and we're getting very close to doing complex numbers very soon. So you can review math and learn all about how numbers really work. The next lecture is going to be on variables and memory management. Some more notes on how we do memory management in Python. And along with variables, we're going to talk more about what a Python object is. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for your support. Thanks for subscribing and liking and sharing these videos. And thanks for, you know, throwing me money at Patreon or supporting me in other ways. Guys, take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. This video is part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.